Productions brings you first entertainment in the modern world and in a vintage manner with the cast that's keeping the golden age of radio alive in a day in the life of Hollywood 1950s. With the voices of Dominique Kreckner, just Betty Gray, Jasmine Lofton as Rachel Ellis Hagen, Tony Ballard as Mason Davis, and Tamara Solomon as Mike Anderson. We're embarking upon a very important season. Hunting? What the square? Mason! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we embark upon a very important season, the Academy Awards. As with the rest of you, the cast here at A Day in the Life of prepares, predicts, and participates in the annual occasion. We look in on Betty, who's arranging plans for the big night now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is that a fact? You don't say. Well, all right, Amos, but we're not in any need for taxi services tonight. <laughs> no, not even the Los Angeles chapter. What? Who? Dennis. Well, whatever you do, keep him out of it. <laughs> Listen, Amos, I have to go. Goodbye. get a column in the publication about the party you're throwing tonight after the Academy Awards ceremony. You mean, you want to write about me in your paper? Well, not you exactly, Betty. <laughs> Gee, imagine a whole spread written entirely about me. Betty, <laughs> not you specifically. And me on the cover of Vogue! No, Betty, whoa. I don't think you can get where I'm going. I know where you're going, I just don't think you understand where I'm driving at. In other words, you don't have to use any other words. The words I gave you were just fine. All right, Betty, all right. I'll play ball. If only to get to the story of the party approval from you. I don't know what I'm going to sell Mr. Petrie. Don't worry. He'll buy it. Who's Mr. Petrie, anyhow? The new head of the board. The head of the board? No, I'm afraid I can't help with that position. With the silence in the audience, I take that joke is way too sophisticated. Or are there a lot of Perry Como fans out there? <laughs> All right, Anderson. You write me up a good publicity story in your publication spread, and you can use my party as a feature. Say, Betty, I didn't think you went in for publicity pieces anymore. Yes. Is this Mr. Little's office? This is Betty Gray. I believe one of your patients has just escaped from your facility. No, not Ronald Coleman. I believe James Hilton took care, good care of that. Hello? Hello? Who pulled the jack out of Betty? The... Get off the phone. Just what do you think you're doing? Trying to get you the best of care, my dear. I believe Gilda isn't the only one whose memory has failed her. All right, all right. I just thought by now, being a big Hollywood star, you would have been through with trying to grab headlines. <laughs> uh, operator, can you ring Dr. Leno's office again? No, I'm afraid this is a case of emergency. I'm sure this one escaped from the snake pit. Betty, you stop that. As soon as you realize Olivia de Havilland's already been nominated for that performance, I'll be glad to. Unless it was Blanche Dubois you were competing against. But I'm sorry to tell you, Vivian has already collected on that one. Oh, I do. Uh, excuse me, Anderson. Hello? Oh, hello, Henry. Kathy? <laughs> that quick, huh? No, I don't need a... Amos. So he's got you, eh? No, thanks, Henry. I don't want any part of that racket. I'll leave that one all on you. Hey, why don't you pawn it off on Dennis? It's not like he hasn't tried to do the same thing to you in the past. <laughs> I know. My mind thinks that way sometimes. Sure thing. So long, Henry. See you at the police station. Oh, this is an after party. <laughs> okay, Anderson. Let's get started. On the night of March 
30, 1955, at the 27th Annual Academy Awards for the first and only time, actress Dorothy Dandridge will be nominated in the Best Actress category in a leading role for the 1954 version to the 1943 libretto of Carmen Jones, becoming the first black woman to be nominated for a leading role at the Academy Awards. This film also stars Harry Belafonte, Pearl Bailey, Brock Peters, and Diane Carroll. While Dorothy did not win the award, she can be seen as presenter for the Best Film Editing category. Hey, y'all, just a cup of coffee, please. No milk. Hey, and if it doesn't have milk, it can be without cream. <laughs> Gosh, your boy, that Melvin Douglas still cracks me up. Hey, Mason. Hi, Rachel. Hey, Alice. Another cup of coffee for my friend. Aw, Mason, you don't have to buy me a cup of coffee. I, I, I'm buying? <laughs> Mason. Alice, one cup of coffee, please. <laughs> Just when I thought you were selfish, you sacrificed your cup of coffee for me. And an empty cup, Alice. Here, Rachel. You can have half of mine. <laughs> ah! Rachel, look! What in the world did you do that for? This cup of coffee is on me. Okay, not where you're standing, it's not. Do you have those two orders ready, Alice? Dennis and I are in a hurry. Uh, we have to head over to the club and help Betty set up for the Academy Award after party. Hey, can you and Dennis give me a lift? Ah, look, not that kind of look, Rachel. <laughs> Put me down. Gladly. <laughs> Goodbye, Mason. Wow, where does she learn to lift like that? What a moonshine Dennis is making. It must have had more than potatoes in it. <laughs> what am I sitting here for? If I don't high step it out of here, I'm going to be late for Betty's myself. That'll be 25 cents, Mason. Me? I didn't even have any coffee. From where you're standing, you did. Fine. Here, here, take the quarter. Keep the change. And now we come to the part in our show where we present to you the Academy Award nominees and winners. For the best, best Actor, Actresses, Supporting Actor, Actresses, Best Screenplay, and Best Picture of 1954. Here at the 27th Academy Award Ceremony, without further delay, Betty, may we have the nominees for Best Actor and Leading Role, please? The nominees are Marlon Brando, On the Waterfront, Humphrey Bogart, The Kane Mutiny, Dean Crosby, The Country Girl, James Mason, A Star is Born, Dan O'Hurley, Robinson Crusoe, and the winner is Marlon Brando on the Waterfront. And now, the nominees for Best Actress in Leading Role are Dorothy Dandridge, Carmen Jones, Judy Garland, A Star is Born, Jane Wyam, Magnificent Obsession. Audrey Hepburn, Sabrina. Grace Kelly, The Country Girl. And the winner is... Grace Kelly, The Country Girl. <laughs> Rachel, may we have the nominees now for the Best Supporting Actor in all supporting roles? The nominees are... Carl Malden, On the Waterfront. Rod Steiger, On the Waterfront. Tom Tooley. The Kane Mutiny, Edmund O'Brien, The Barefoot Contessa, Lee J. Cobb, On the Waterfront, and the winner is Edmund O'Brien, The Barefoot Contessa. And now, the nominees for Best Supporting Actress in a Supporting Role are Kathy Gerardo, Broken Lance, Jan Sterling, The High and the Mighty, Claire Trevor, The High and the Mighty, Eva Marie Saint, On the Waterfront, and Nina Foch, Executive Suite. And the winner is Eva Marie Saint on the waterfront. All right, now for Best Director, Pike, may we have the nominees, please? The nominees are Ela Kazan on the waterfront, Alfred Hitchcock, Rare Window, George Seaton, The Country Girl, William A. Wellman, The High and the Mighty, Billy Wilder, Sabrina. And the winner is Ila Kazan, on the water. Okay, now for best screenplay for a motion picture. Rachel, the nominees are... The Barefoot Contessa, Joseph L. Mankiewicz, 
Genevieve, William Rose. On the waterfront, Bud Schulzberg. The Glenn Miller story, Valentine Davis and Oscar Probst. Knock on Wood, Norma Panama, and Melvin Frank. And the winner is On the Waterfront, Bud Schulzberg. And now, for our last category, Betty, will you present the best motion picture of 1954? The nominees are William Proberg for Paramount Pictures, The Country Girl, Jack Cummings for Metro Golden Mare, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, Sol C. Seagal for 20th Century Fox, Three Coins in the Fountain, Sam Spiegel for Columbia Pictures, On the Waterfront, Stanley Kramer for Columbia Pictures, The Cane Mutiny, and the winner is Sam Spiegel for Columbia Pictures, On the Waterfront. For a complete list of Academy Award winners of 1954, as well as any other era, we suggest that you turn to Mr. Oscar himself. And now we turn back to the cast of A Day in the Life Of, as Mason rushes to the hotel ballroom, where the gang seems to be helping out on the decoration for the Academy Award party tonight. Wait a minute. Mason? That's me. So long, folks. I rush. <laughs> I'm here, guys. I made it. Mason, where have you been? I've been out drinking coffee. Oh, how you look like the pot it came in. Oh, okay. No matter, we don't have much time and there's still a lot to do. Right. Where's Betty? She's out back with Dennis and Henry. Hey, up, Pike. I went in the lobby and gathered all the... Mason. Well, if it isn't the coffee column and cream and milk. Huh? Nothing, Pike. Rachel, just a little teapot, short and stout. Why you... Please! Coffee, tea, calm down. There's enough cream and milk for everybody. Now, let's set our pots and kettles aside for the greater good of the party. I have a write-up to do on this Academy Award party, and I'd rather not mention how the pot beats the kettle black. Neutral corners, both. Settle down. Here comes Betty. Hey, hey, I made it, Betty. I remembered you the first moment I saw you. Oh, thanks. I can't help the coffee stains. Huh? I remember you were in trouble all the time. Oh, uh, no, no more than usual. Maybe they just didn't know how to handle you. Hey, I've been saying that for years, you know. They don't know how to handle me, though. <laughs> With a little more patience and kindness. Yeah. That's what makes people mean and difficult. People don't care enough about them. Yeah, you know, just one date with me. Wait a wait a minute. Betty, are, are we talking the same language? Unless you're talking Marlon Brando. I don't think she can hear you. Talking Marlon Brando? Is he here? On the waterfront. He, he is? Oh, well, I'm going to go out there and speak to him then. Not him. Terry Malloy on the waterfront, nominated tonight for Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Picture, and so on at the Academy Awards. Oh, that's the scene from On the Waterfront where Terry and Edie, they just escaped from the church Johnny Friendly's gang had busted in. I remember now. Terry and Edie are in the park. Stand aside, Pike. Stand aside, Pike. I won't take it from you. Now, you listen to me. I better get you home. There's too many guys that got one thing on their mind. <laughs> so am I going to see you again? What for? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, come on. Come on. Whoever you are. I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wasn't that the last line from Streetcar? Yes, Pike. It was 1951. And you know, as these years go by, it seems that Betty's cheaters have gone from seeing Tyrone Howard to eyeing Marlon Brando. Hmm. Excuse me, Rachel. I'll be back. Pike, we have work to do. Where are you off to? 
to snag, snatch, or grab Betty's cheaters. Between Tyrone Power and Marlon Brando, I can have my own Academy Award after party on the waterfront by way of a streetcar named Desire with Jesse James wearing Mark of Zorro, and I'll let them eat cake. Those were the same plans Betty had herself. I'm afraid if Pike tries to steal Betty's glasses, she'll be wearing cake, <laughs> leaving them on the waterfront on the black swan. Well, Rachel, you better get to work. This party isn't going to plan itself. There's still tables to arrange, decorations to be brought in, and now no car to bring them in with. Dennis, Henry, call Amos. We may need his taxi service after all. <laughs> I hear the back. The voices heard on tonight's broadcast were provided by Jasmine Malkin as Rachel Ellis Hagen. Also, Tamara Solomon as Pike Anderson. Hello, folks. This is Tony Ballard as Mason Davis. And Dominique, Dominique Breckenridge as Betty Gray, reminding you that all of the women's wardrobe worn tonight and the broadcast were, were provided by her private line, Dominique Private Collection. Uh, thanks to you for tuning in to our broadcast. Remember to subscribe to our Dominique Review YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Dominique Review, and share us with others before we bring you an all-new episode next week. Be sure to tune in with your friends and family here at the YouTube broadcasting channel, Dominique Review. This has been a Dominique Review production. Good night, everybody. Great. Okay. Hey, Alice. Just a couple clock. Wow. What page are you on? <laughs> oh, no. Well, if it isn't the coffee cup, call me. Okay. You called it that? Uh huh. Yeah. I'm the caller. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the scene from On the Waterfront where Terry, an idiot, just escaped from the church. Johnny Ink. Oh, Johnny English, really? Look at that. <laughs> Those were the same places. Betty had herself. Oh, sorry. Look, while we're at it, just do the last line with Jesse James wearing the mark of Zara. The mask hey. of Zara. Hey. Oh, good one. Okay. Uh, okay. To snag, snatch, or grab Betty's cheaters. Between Tyrone Power and Marlon Brando, I can have my own Academy Award after party on the waterfront by way of a street name. A street name. A street name, car design. <laughs> oh, okay.